bought them books um a lot of books <laughs> Hello, today I'm doing a book haul. It is not specifically a May book haul or a June book haul. It's just a book haul. I, I'm still going to do my monthly what I read. So like what I read in May, what I read in June, etc, etc. But I have decided that when it comes to book haul, you know, when I get enough that like constitutes like a haul, like when I, I've got like a couple of books, um, because I'm going on holiday soon, then I am starting my master's degree. So buying books is like muddy. Uh, so I'm not going on a book buying ban per se because there's some books coming out that I really want to get hold of but I am going to restrict my book buying, my monthly book buying significantly so I will do a haul like every maybe like two months or three months or something but I'm doing a haul this month because I went mad. <laughs> In this haul there are lots of books, um, 28? I think, which is probably the biggest I've ever done. Nine of those books are Philosopher's Stone. Like, the same book. <laughs> I'll explain why, obviously. There's, there's reasons for this. So, we might as well get this out of the way. I'll explain this and then I'll go into the books which people don't actually know about and have not been around for 20 years, but you know, here we go. So for those that don't know, I made an entire video about it, which I will link down below if you would like to go and check out. Baltimore are hosting a Wizarding World book club starting in June, so this month, to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Obviously, I really like Harry Potter, just a little, just a little bit, and I obviously wanted to get involved with reread, because any excuse to reread Harry Potter, I am there. As a present to myself, I bought myself a new set of Harry Potter books. <laughs> this is my third full set of Harry Potter books. I have the American ones that make the Hogwarts Castle, my original first edition, and then I have a couple of individual ones from different editions and different box sets and stuff. But this is my third full set of Harry Potter books. We have Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, my fave, my fave one, and of course Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows which is the final book in this series. I'm sure that everyone knows but I genuinely got a comment the other day asking what Harry Potter was from someone that didn't know and I kind of forget that you know it has been around for a long time that there is a new generation of people that don't know what it's about. So for those that don't know, Harry Potter is about an 11 year old boy who lives with his aunt and uncle after his parents have died. On his 11th birthday he gets a mysterious letter from a school called Hogwarts telling him that he is in fact a wizard and has been accepted at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. So he goes to the school and it's everything that unfolds from there. That's what Harry Potter is about. The main boy is called Harry Potter and lots of stuff goes down over the course of seven books. Um, it's an emotional journey. JK Rowling knows how to ruin everyone's lives. There are lots of good characters, there are lots of bad characters, there are lots of cool stuff and twists and cool things and it's just a really 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 good book series. So if you have never read Harry Potter, if you are a little bit unsure about it, please do so. The first book is 20 years old this year which is really <laughs> I feel old. I'm going to be doing a week of Harry Potter videos in celebration starting on the 26th of June. So due to the previously mentioned 20th anniversary of Philosopher's Stone, um, Bloomsbury Publishing released anniversary house editions of that book, so just of Philosopher's Stone. It's not a series of books, it's just a Philosopher's Stone, but they released them in paper bag and hard bag and I got all eight. Why not? <laughs> so I obviously got Slytherin, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, and Gryffindor. They're the shiny paperbacks. And then I got Slytherin, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff and Gryffindor. And I actually did an unboxing when I first received these, opening them and showing them in much more detail and the new information that they include and like the bookmarks and stuff that came with it. So if you want to go and check that out I will also link that down below as well to see these books in a bit more detail. But those are also some books that I got recently. So yeah, nine copies of Philosopher's Stone. The Philosopher's Stone and Harry Potter aside, I also recently got A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Maas, which is the third book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series, which was the ending of Feyre's story, I believe. I think the next one is different characters, all the same characters that we know, but focusing on them a bit more. And the first book in this series follows a girl called Feyre, who is a huntress and she's hunting for her family and she ends up killing a very important 
Faye. So the High Faye of that court comes to her and says that she has to live with him in payment and it's everything that happens from there. The first book is essentially a Beauty and the Beast retelling and then the second book completely ruins your life. I did really like this. I think I still prefer A Court of Mist and Fury which is the second book. Lots happened in this book and then it didn't feel like much happened. It builds up to loads of things happening and then not much really did. It kind of was a little bit of a letdown because I was really anticipating it and there are a couple of things that I had issues with in this book but I did enjoy it and it was a fun read and it was nice to have that final conclusion to Feyre's story. I also got Not Working by Lisa Owens. It's about a girl called Claire who is kind of stuck in a what is she doing with her life situation. She's just walked out on her job without really thinking about what she's doing next. She doesn't have a new one. And she's trying to figure out what she should do with her time and with her life and what she wants to do and how to make things right. I relate completely, 100% literally to the job thing. On this coffee cup it says to do quick job, find purpose, panic. Same. I'm in a sort of a very similar position to the main girl of this book to be honest so I am looking forward to reading this. I saw it in Waterstones and I was like I, this is me. So I'm looking forward to it. I've heard lots of good things about it. It's got some really 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 good uh, reviews on it. said that it's really funny and really good and real so I'm really looking forward to picking this one up. And also Titan Books sent me a book recently which I was very 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 excited to receive so thank you so much Titan Books and that was Lost Boy by Christina Henry and Christina Henry is the best selling author of the book Alice which is kind of a take on Alice in Wonderland and I am a massive Reed Hallings fan so I love those ones and this is a Peter Pan retelling and a twist on Peter Pan and I, I, I just love retellings like so much. I think they're so cool. I love seeing different people's perspectives of characters that I love and characters that even sometimes characters I don't necessarily like and seeing someone else's take on them and just having more ideas of stories. I think that's why I love fan fiction so much. I think we've cracked it. I think that's why. So when I heard about this book and Titan Books asked me if I would like a copy to review, I got so excited. I was like, yes, please. So I'm looking forward to reading this. It comes out on the 4th of July and I will have a review up on that day or just before that day to discuss the book with you because I am so excited for its release and to read this book and to actually have a Peter Pan retelling because I haven't read or found a good Peter Pan retelling in a very, 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 very long time. So I'm really, 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 really looking forward to starting this one. Then also I got The Circle by Dave Eggers. I'm sure you know what I'm gonna say, but I became aware of this book because this book is actually going to be a film. Is it out already? Uh, with Emma Watson. And it is about a organization called The Circle, which runs all of your internet activity in one safe place. It's very accessible very safe, protected and all that stuff and there's a girl called May who gets a job there and she thinks it's going to be really good but then when she sort of starts to look more into it she starts to kind of uncover not so very good truths and secrets about this organisation and everything that goes on. I love any kind of like cyber thing. When I was doing my undergraduate degree I had an entire lecture on hacking and staying safe online and how all of that works and the kind of science behind the technology and how people can do it and stuff and I left it like made me leave the lecture absolutely terrified like I was scared of everything but it was really interesting and I really love that kind of thing so I'm hoping that this has those kind of vibes to it and I'm looking forward to reading it. I wanted to read it before the film because the film looks really good but I'd like to read the book first. And I got When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandeya Menon which is a book that I've seen all over booktube since the arc of this book came out and I wasn't sure if it was one that I wanted to read but then a bit like um history is all you left me like because everyone was talking about it I was like do I just want to read it because everyone's talking about it or because I'm actually interested in it but I let it sit for a bit I like sort of thought about it and I thought yeah I did want to pick it up I did want to read it I'd heard those are good things so I definitely thought it was worth a shot and I've been loving good contemporaries recently and it's about a girl called Dimple who all she wants to do is just basically escape her traditional parents and get out, go to university and just kind of get away and then a boy called Rishi who his parents believe that Dimple is the perfect match for him but she has completely different plans and doesn't want any of that. It's when they meet and they think that they know each other and they think that they kind of have the other one all sussed out but they do not at all uh, and it's kind of what happens when they meet and that kind of connection and how opposites attract and stuff. I've heard lots of good things about it like even when it was still an arc I heard those are good things so I'm looking forward to reading it and seeing what I think. Then another Harry Potter related one. Also my t-shirts are Harry Potter today. Serious. <laughs> Serious. I got this was a impulse buy um, this was not something that I thought out that I thought yes I want to get that because I have like a book budget 
every month so that I don't spend all of my money on books because you know I easily could but this was an impulse buy and not something that was in my itinerary or plans um but I saw it and it was on they were on offer and I thought if I don't do it now I won't do it so I did it and that is the American editions of the Hogwarts library which the box is beautiful can we just discuss that but then the books <sighs> I've never been in love like this Ever. So basically it is the Quidditch Through the Ages, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them and The Tales of Beedle the Bard, all by J.K. Rowling, well like Kennel Worthy Wisp, Newt Scamander and um, like short stories and stuff, uh, but all by J.K. Rowling and essentially like I've got these books twice, like I've got the new editions, I've got the original copies of them, but these, this, these are the American editions and they're beautiful and they're so much better than the English ones and usually I'm not bothered about covers but these are so much better the way they feel the way they are just just everything about them is gorgeous and just everything inside them is gorgeous and I love them and they are literally like some of my favorite things that I own Harry Potter wise right now they came in the post and I was just staring at them for ages like just I was literally just looking at them like this is these are so beautiful <laughs> so for those that don't know what these are you can actually get the textbooks and books that Harry and his friends have Quidditch Through the Ages which is a book all about Quidditch and the history of Quidditch Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander which obviously there is now a film of the same name and this is the textbook that Newt wrote all about the different beasts and how to take care of them the ministry classification where they fit in and all that kind of stuff and the Tales of Beedle the Bard which is the wizarding um sort of bedtime stories I guess sort of wizarding fairy tales which obviously contains the famous tale of three brothers that's what they are they're really pretty you can get them in England as well but the covers are very different in England they rebranded them all after the Fantastic Beasts film came out and the English ones were a bit um yeah a very big changed their mind situation uh they did a lot there's a lot different there but I really love these ones I definitely prefer these ones they're beautiful they sit on my shelf so lovely and I love them so Harry Potter then I got Patrick Ness's newest release release the book the book also called release so this book is about a boy called Adam Thorne and everything in his life is kind of going a bit chaotic and falling apart and then across the town a ghost has just arisen from the lake and it's every that story and everything that goes on from there I have to admit I've actually not ever read a Patrick Ness book fully. I started one and never finished it because I got really busy and I haven't read any other ones. I've been meaning to, it's not that I've got anything against him or it's not that I don't like his writing or anything, I've just never gotten around to it. And this one doesn't look too long and I've heard so many good things about it. All my old colleagues at Waterstones, because I'm still in that shop like six days a week, let's be real. Seeing everyone and talking with everyone, she just kept telling me I had to read this book. She was just like, please just buy it, like just just buy it. So I uh, I thought, yes, I actually, finally I'm going to, I'm going to get one, I'm gonna read it, I'm gonna check it out, see if it lives up to all the hype and all the good things that I've heard about it, so I got it. I was gonna say finally, but then I remembered I have also bought an audiobook this month, so yeah. Um, I know ebook. Oh wow, is there like 30 books in this? 29? Oh, there's a lot of books in this. So not finally, but finally for the physical books, I have Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare, but I bought three copies of Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare because... <sighs> I collect Cassandra Clare's books. I have a huge Shadowhunters book collection, so when the new one came out, obviously I wanted to get the different editions and the different versions. But the first one that I got was this edition, which was the WH Smith edition. This is the one that I actually read, so it's all like... You can see I've read it and it's got all my review notes in it. This edition was really cool because it had a glossary of the, all the new runes on the inside cover, both sides, so at the front and the back, which I thought was really cool and I love the new runes. It sort of says what they all mean and stuff, which I thought was really exciting. Then I got the this Waterstones edition, which is the same, but it has blue pages and also an extra chapter, which was swanky. And then I got the Waterstones limited edition, there, which is signed. It's got the signature stamp in it, I think, uh, which is kind of Cassandra Clare's signature, but like a stamp with a dagger, which I think is really cool. So this is the kind of limited edition one with the embossed, like really pretty, 
rooms and it matches my Lady Midnight one which they did last year as well which is the same. For those that don't know Lord of Shadows is the second book in the Dark Artifices series by Cassandra Clare which is part of the whole Shadowhunter world so it's uh, about a, a species of people called Shadowhunters who are half angel half human and they hunt demons and it is the sequel series to the Mortal Instruments series um, and it all ties in with the Mortal Instruments and the Infernal Devices and all the other ones so it's a very big series, but it's a very good series. It is one of my favourites, and I absolutely love it. And Lord of Shadows was definitely Cassandra Clare's best work, so please, please, please go and check it out if you haven't read this one yet. If you haven't read the series, I definitely recommend it. Okay, so audiobooks. I bought The Unexplicable Logic of My Life by Benjamin Allery Sines, which I'm super excited to read. Benjamin Allery Sines is the author of Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe, which is a must fave book. It's my fave standalone, my fave contemporary. That book had such an effect on me. I loved it so much so when I found out he was releasing a new one, it's not the same characters but it's from the same author because I love his writing style and how he tells stories. I wanted to get it and I loved the audiobook for Aristotle and Dante which was read by Lin-Manuel Miranda. This one is not but I just really love how his, the way that he writes how that comes across in audiobook form. So I decided to download that one and I'm really, 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 really looking forward to starting it. I think it's going to be my new walking listen thing I listen to when I walk places um, and I'm so, so, so excited for it. And then finally I got an ebook this month and that was Alex and Eliza by Melissa de la Cruz. For those that don't know, it is the love story between Alexander Hamilton and Elizabeth Schuyler back, way back when, when Hamilton was a founding father and America was still a baby. And it is uh, based on that, but also like obviously the hit musical Hamilton, which again, written and all done by Lin-Manuel Miranda. You know, he's a pretty, pretty cool guy, man of many talents. So that obviously has had a bit of big effect on lots of people. It's an incredible musical, incredible soundtrack. I am so excited to see it when it finally comes to England. Obviously I wanted to read this book because I really find their, that like history interesting. And like Elizabeth Schuyler was an absolutely incredible woman. The stuff she did and how strong she was and the stuff she put up with, she was pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to reading that one as well. I'm trying to use my Kingdom more, so I'm trying to get some ebooks. So yeah, so those are just... I was going to say some, but a lot of books that I've got recently. Have you got any of these books recently? Are you planning on reading any of these books or getting any of these books? What do you think of them? Are they any good? What books have you got recently? I'm all, obviously, I'm always up for recommendations. What have you been reading recently? Let's discuss down below. If you're new here, I make videos a couple of times a week. So if you would like to stick around and join us, then you can do that. And as usual, all my links will be in the description below if you would like to come hang out with me on all my other social medias. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you're doing really, 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 really well. And I will see you next time. Goodbye. Thank <music> you.